Hey everybody, welcome back. We are going to dive into this. This is all we got on this one. It is, uh, I'm glad you guys picked this one actually because it's a different process than Joy Rides. This is, uh, there's only four demos. It's actually not even demos. The last two are really the record. So there's one demo of music, one demo with a vocal, and then we record it. So, um, welcome back. I'm glad you guys uh, picked this one. And uh... so, a few adjustments we made. One, I'm gonna situate the camera somewhere up in here, and um, I'm gonna show you a little more of what we recorded this time. And I'll I'll try to jump the camera up when I need to. And um, yeah, how you guys doing? Had a good week? Ready for some music? So also the other thing we're going to do is I'm going to try to hit questions a lot more often this time. Um, I'm realizing the point of Periscope is uh, we get a chance to interact here. So um, every now and then when I'm not in a train of thought, I will check into the questions and hello, hello to California. And um, so first thing I'll do is I will play the, uh, I'll play the demo. Now, again, this was, this was in the songwriting marathon that we did. When we hit January of 2014, the only three songs that we had at the end of 2013 that wound up making the record was Used to, Remain, and All I See. That's all we had. Um, now, we had a ton of other ideas, but the only ones that were like definite, okay, those need to be on the next Mute Math record were those three. So we just realized that we needed to write a lot more songs still. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions about Hit Parade um, and what happened. And that was one of the songs we had, but we were on the fence with it. And we weren't writing other songs that felt complimentary to that one. Um, so we weren't sure about it. And so we just said, you know, the only way we're going to know what to do with Hit Parade or any of these other songs um, so we've got to just write a ton more. So that's what we did. So our, our New Year's resolution for 2014 was writing a song every day. And one of my favorite memories of that particular January was the second week of January. I'll never forget it. And um, I, uh, I came to my email box and I saw this idea named Suture. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a track from Darren um, that I got. And here it is. next part I'm already sold at this point I'm, I'm feeling this I'm already singing melodies to myself I'm ready to dive in um, and then in true DK fashion what he usually does is he's just trying to throw a bunch of ideas at me to just get some inspiration going for a song idea and um, this goes off the grid a little bit but there's all some exciting stuff too right here I'm gonna play for you bass drop going on right now. I don't know if you can hear it.
like, yes, 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 yes. I will definitely gladly accept that. Um, that is awesome. So I was, I was super stoked to dive into that idea. Um, before I take, I'm going to take some questions now. Before I do, I'm going to just let you know, I was asking, what did you use? What was he doing? So Darren was just jamming with a Korg MS-2000 and just rocking that arpeggiator. Um, he was running one side of it through an amp and the other side through some pedals. Um, and it's just this amazing sound. And um, he just had this groovy pattern on the arpeggiator. He was just jamming with different chords. Um, and lines and just strung them all together um, and there was a lot of inspiration in this so if you guys have any questions I'm looking at questions now okay uh, the idea of the vocals at the end um, it took a while to get to um, I, I will explain that uh, when we get there um, how was it performing with John Foreman earlier? I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get any better than John Foreman, does it? I mean, he's a what an incredible guy, incredible talent. Um, certainly a songwriting hero of mine, and um, you know, Switchfoot's meant a lot to this band, um, just opening doors for us and um, encouragement. John, I actually sent him a bunch of these ideas. There was there was a tight group of people while we were making this record that when we'd get ideas on their feet and I wasn't sure exactly what to think about them or if it was improvable or not, uh, we'd send them out uh, to some friends. And John's always been that guy uh, for us and um, just a trusted voice on getting uh, some good critiques on the music as we're trying to develop it. Um, another guy who played a part in this record was Justin Medlow Johnson. I got to meet him a couple years ago, and what a great guy, JMJ. Um, and so we we sent him some ideas, and he'd give us feedback. You know what we're doing, what we're doing good, what we could do better. Um, Jamie Liddell, I remember we sent him a, a version of the of this record. Um, another great round of feedback we got from him. So um, it's good, you know, it's like it's like when you make a film and you do these test viewings, you know, to see um, if, if the storyline should be edited a little more and stuff. I, I think when you're trying to put together a record, sometimes it's good to um, test it in a controlled um, environment with people who are not uh, necessarily invested um, in the process yet. Um, so yeah, John, so there you go. There's a lot of J's, John, Jamie, and Justin, hey, what's up? Hey. I'm uh, I'm online right now. What what's going on? Did you have a good time? I'm scared. You're scared? <laughs> See, look all the pretty hearts. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> Is it time for dinner yet? <laughs> all right, can you let me can you let me finish up? But I'm too be... scared to be dead. You're too scared. To go down. One, one second here. Why are you scared? All right, yeah, and you blocked it. Block it. All right, I'll be down in a minute. It's no monsters. There you go. Best part of my day when that happens. Um, okay, so <laughs> little Amelia. Um, yeah, the joy of my life. It's great having her around. Um, Okay, so back to this. So I got the stems from Darren, and I just started following a train of thought um, to just throw a vocal down on it. Um, and I had it pretty immediately. I mean, I, I just, I kind of just took it one step at a time. The very first line I had was walking on air, um, living in the stratosphere. Still has something wrong up here, living without you. And then all of a sudden, when that line happened, I was like, okay, I, I feel like I know what the song is about. I just had this vision of just kind of floating out in space, and it just became this, um, you know, isn't that, isn't that the feeling that the track kind of provokes? You're just, you're out in space, right? Um, and so this feeling of, of, of being on top of the world, um, but alone. Um, so it kind of became this cautionary tale of a love song. Um and I just followed that train of thought, and I didn't, I didn't 
know what was going to be the chorus. I just went from the first line to the second line and then felt there should be a pre-chorus. And then this was the, uh, this was the first demo once I threw a vocal on it. Um, I think I just did it that night. We had it in one day. Other parts of the track uh, that Darren had made, um, I, didn't even, I didn't even get to that point. I just stayed here. I, I think the tricky part is when you're writing to a track, and, and this is the way we've made Mute Math music since the beginning. Most commonly, Darren sends me an instrumental track, I throw a vocal on it, um, and then we just figure out if it's good or not. Um, and if it's good, then we try to develop it, band it up a bit. Um, but the, the tricky thing is, is usually there's a lot of good things when you're just listening to an instrumental track, especially if it goes on rabbit trails. But then when you start to write a song, you start to get a line, you start to get a concept. Um, you've got to check out of the track for a while. And then you just got to sit down at an instrument, really simple. You just got to figure out what are your chords, what's the melody, and then you begin to follow your, your instinct. Um, as a songwriter, just figure out what should come next, you know, and, and you don't, you try to unlock yourself from what's happening in the track. Because in the track, you know, you can just, your tendency will just be, or at least for me, it's just to, we'll just come up with cool vocal parts for each, each part of the track, but that doesn't necessarily result in what may be a good song. Um, so as this stratosphere concept began to develop and there was this, this chorus, you know, you have to start letting the song lead the charge, and that's uh, that's what we were doing. Now, this demo, it wasn't going anywhere, really. We knew it had to go somewhere. We weren't sure if it should have a drastic left turn. Should we mess with some of those other uh, musical parts that, that Darren had going? Um, so we left it alone until we could all get together as a band, and then we started tracking it um, to kind of try to flesh out an arrangement, um, find dynamics. Um, you know, I think the biggest critique we got on this song is we started playing it for people at the record company or um, our friends um, to just get a reaction was, cool, it needs a chorus. Um, because it didn't have the hit you over the head chorus, you know, like um, you come to expect. And... You know, I, I, I know there's a time and a place for hit you over the head type of courses, but every now and then it's, it's you know, I love those type of songs where you just suddenly find yourself in the chorus and it's just, um, it's just little nuances that, that, that give you that, that lift or, or the things that keep you engaged. Um, but overall, the arrangement can still be linear. Um, and I enjoy that. And, you know, I mentioned one of my, big inspiration records uh, for Vitals was in Yada Mandata by The Police, um, which is a, it's a great groove-oriented type of record where it was, you know, just the melody and the lyric 
over the linear groove changing was enough to make it feel like a chorus. And it's something that I, I, I wanted us to aspire to for this track. Um, and not, you know, all of a sudden go to the crashing on the ride and, you know, big guitars coming in for a chorus and I'm singing at the top of my range. Um, so that's what we were messing with, trying to figure out what, what could be those, those moves. Um, so first thing was to let Darren play on it. Um, and we just let him play over the demo. And I know that's really what you want to hear now at this point, right? You want to hear, you want to hear a Darren take. And before I play this, I'll take a few more questions. Um, do I enjoy the Arturia on stage? Yes. And all the software that comes with it. It's, I, I love, love all the sounds. Um, and it's a great controller. Why is Darren so badass? Um, <laughs> come on, you know the answer. What's your favorite color? Don't know. Drinking? Nighttime coffee. Is this a sound you want to stay with for a while? Uh, that's a good, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I feel like if I were going to make another Mute Math record right now, I would want to do something completely insane like um like like this whole record for us was a was an experiment in the construction of a song um and really trying to get inside whatever you know the the vocals were were singing about and trying to make sure it was developed well um trimming off the fat um and I feel like after having done this, my 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 knee jerk reaction to creating something new would be to just do the opposite of that, like and just get on crazy train of thoughts and just not so much about the construction of, of a song, but how insane of a listening journey we could create. I, that would that would be where I'm at right now. So, um, which quite honestly, maybe now, maybe now is the time to look at an idea like Hit Parade. Because I think why Hit Parade didn't make it is because that was a song that wasn't meant to be conventionalized at all. Um, and it was admittedly a prog rock type of song. If any of you guys had seen us play that one uh, as we were trying it out in 2013, um, it was a fun song. It was an energetic song. Um, but, you know, the vocals were just about kind of helping pushing it along and it was constantly changing. There was there was nothing really concrete getting said or sing alongable. And um, so we just kind of shied away from that idea because um, it didn't seem like it was what we were after on this one. Um, but having said all that, maybe I would I'd probably revisit Hit Parade and um, probably in the right headspace for that now. Um, anyway, so what normally happens is we let Darren do tons of drum takes. This is one that I'm going to play. We, we colored it red so that that was where the good stuff was happening. Um, you know, and he just, he plays the groove. He gives us a bunch of fills to choose from. <laughs> can't handle the awesomeness.
We should have used that, Phil. Ah, oh, that's a good one, too. DK being DK. It's great. Five mics. Um, that was um, at Fishburns. This was at Darren's place in Tyler, where we recorded all the drums for this. Um, it was just this little box of a room, box of a drum room that Darren built. Um, and it was just a great, tight, articulate sound. We knew that's, that's the type of drums that we wanted. Um, not only for the whole record, but especially this song. Um, and we threw it into, so, you know, Darren will do a take like that. Um, we comp it and, and we start trying to figure out what does this song need to get from start to finish and enjoy the whole ride, right? So what do you think? needs does it need guitar does it need some more synth pads does it need some crazy twist and turn um and we found that the original demo was doing it was just meandering a little too much um we needed some dynamics um so i mean you know how the record turned out you know this pre-course we wound up doing this dip um And yeah, we recorded these claps up in the print shop right above the studio. Um, it's this great reverb that we were recording. It was in the stairwell going down to the studio. Uh, we put the mics all in there and was clapping up in the print shop and just getting the reverb from it. Um, it came out really good. Top the world was all I ever wanted, but now I see it was 
So what we wound up doing to create more music in this, um, and Darren flexing his production chops on here, was all we had was that one take of Darren jamming on the MS-2000, and then we never had that sound again. Um, he recorded through the amps at a certain setting, and then it changed. Um, so we just had this long take of, which was the main sound of the song. So to change the chords or try to, you know, create other, I don't know, colors, we just pitched it a lot. Um, so that's what wound up happening in this outro. We're trying to figure out how do we end it. Um, and Darren pitched up this, uh, this arpeggio. That was probably the right twist to have at the end. Um, just go to some sort of outro where we just start recoloring the chorus a bit. Um, and so as, as I was singing the vocals and just letting the vocal go, it just felt like it wanted to another layer, another layer. So it became a real fun vocal experiment as well um, to just see how many, how many harmony points could we create um, and, you know, I love when things can be harmonized to where it's not all moving together, but it's things that are moving against each other and you just get passing moments of a nice chord right here and the chord that happens in this moment because it just rubbed against that instrument and, and then this other vocal counters through. And so you get those cross sections of melodies that are creating these random harmonies um that's really engaging and fun to make as well so that's what this whole outro became is just how far could we go um and so we just stacked some vocals on here Some of those are doubles, um, triples on a certain part. But yeah, that was that was a really uh, fun moment to have. And I don't think we've ever really done anything like that. Um, maybe uh, after we left our homes, that was that was kind of a, a moment where something like that got to happen and um, amendment. There might be a few moments that we've we've done that over the years, but we it's nice to have one per record at least. Um, we did it again on Safe We Don't Look Down, didn't we? Um, so yeah, so this song uh, finally started to happen. We, we found the right arrangement. I think just trying to figure out how to end it right and make it feel like it was worth the journey um, was the biggest challenge for this one. Um, but we didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, we, which I was thankful for. We, we knew that there was something solid here. Um, and we just didn't allow ourselves to overthink it. Uh, we wanted to keep the song home, you know? Um, 
and uh, just true to what it is from start to finish and, and not like make it feel like it was two or three songs crammed into one. So I was really, uh, I was really pleased with the end result on that. So I'll take, I'll do some more questions. You can, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's a good question. Will I ever rap again? I don't think so. Um, that's, that's not like riding a bike. That's something you have to keep your chops up on. And um, I couldn't wrap my way out of a paper bag right now. <laughs> it's, so it's not going to happen. I'm going to try. Um, I, I, I let that go. You focus on the other parts of music making. But it was fun while it lasted. Um, B-sides, B-sides. Yeah, so we're going to... We'll definitely release... Um, a lot of these in different fashions and forms next year. Um, some of these, as I'm as I'm going through, I'm realizing there's probably other songs to be had, um, and um, we may we may keep a few for the shelf because they they might come together and yield songs for us in the future. Um, programs used, uh, not not sure what you mean by programs. Um, Vitals Part Two. Yeah, we're working on that. There probably is there probably is a Vitals Part Two to be had. Quite honestly, um, it probably it'd probably be a good a good record. We'll try it. Um, we are going to try to put up some instrumentals and stems. I just saw that question. Um, it'd be fun. Gosh, I was really, I was. I was really blown away when we did the Odd Soul uh, remix contest. It was a lot of great ones. Um, so some incredible remixers out there. So we we would love to love to try that again. So um, it's always fun to hear ideas reimagined. Um, a making of DVD on this album. You know, I don't think it seemed like all the filming that we were doing while we were making this album was just for vines. So we have a lot of vines. I don't know if there's a way to string a bunch of vines together into a, a DVD, uh, but maybe if we can we can figure out how to make that interesting. Um, and favorite track on the new album. My favorite track is Composed um, and has been uh, for a while. That that song, song means a lot to me. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get to go through that one some point biggest influences musically certainly the police um, I think when I started making music um, actively trying to produce tracks um, I was very influenced by what was happening in early 90s hip-hop that's why I got an ASR 10 which is this keyboard over here um, and trying to start programming beats from samples. And it's something that me and Darren kind of shared a passion for when we started making music together. So uh, Beastie Boys, Tribe Called Quest, um, the, the way that they were stringing music together, that was, that was, really, that was really inspiring to me. Um, but other than that, you know, I was I was really into um, the contemporary jazz stuff that was happening in the '90s as well. Um, the Muso stuff. We have a sometimes we share our guilty pleasures on the on the band drives. We play, you know, Darren will play his Yanni, um, just just Muso's fest, and um, I'll play something from the Rippingtons or Spyro Gyra. Um, so there was a time in the '90s where that was a lot of fun to listen to and try to figure out you know, the chords and structures that they were doing. Um, but that's, that's way over my head. I'm, I'm much more satisfied with just trying to create pop songs within sort of a, a rock band context. Um, what track was the surprise that stuff least likely to go somewhere? Good question. What track was the most surprising? Um, Well, 
I think Bulletproof was was sort of the sleeper on on this record. Um, it was one that was most polarizing when we first started. If I take you on that journey with Bulletproof, it's uh, there's some rabbit trails that go on. It started with a track that Roy sent. I threw a vocal on it, and no one liked it. Um, it except there was a few people at the label that said, "Don't give up on it." It's a they thought the vocal was great, and we didn't know why because it just felt weird to us. Um, so we we jammed on it. We we kept trying to reinvent it, and and so we wound up realizing that in the end was we just needed to mute the vocal, and the music was really exciting. It's just supposed to be instrumental. Sometimes you just get an idea that y y the singer needs to go get coffee for everybody. So I gladly went and got coffee. They muted it and we got a, a nice instrumental out of it. So I'm, I'm glad that one wound up on the record. Yeah, and it's kind of a, yeah, it's a some, some classic, I feel like Darren drumming on it. And um, I think it's a good compliment to the record. Um, why did y'all stop breaking things live? Love that energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, that's hard to sustain, man. I'll just be, I'll be honest with you. You can't, you can't break all your stuff. Um, and I guess it's, it's a go for broke. If you're not playing Madison Square Garden in a year, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta trim back what you're breaking because you're not, you're not replenishing enough. You don't have the funds to replenish. Um, so we, we've toned that down. We try to take care of our instruments a little more so we can keep doing more shows. <laughs> Thoughts about 21 Pilots. 21 Pilots, yeah, that's a... Um, I found out about them by seeing the, the Bonnaroo show the, on YouTube. It was, it was being shared around and it just happened to come my way. I'd heard of them before, but I'd never seen what they were really doing. Um, and when I saw that set, I, I couldn't look away. I just couldn't figure out, I couldn't process what I was seeing. It was that moment. It was just really exciting for me. And um, I, I think the bravery that they have creatively is, is so inspiring to me. And seeing that they're able to put together all these influences that probably on paper shouldn't go together. Or you would think, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Um, and they've kind of cracked the code on how to do that. And it's, it's something that I've always been passionate about since I started making music is how to put certain influences together that are challenging. Maybe they shouldn't go together. Um, and you know, you, you're supposed to pick a genre, you know, pick, pick what kind of band you want to be and then create within that lane. Um, and those guys, um, they're kind of they're kind of breaking the rules, and I I love what they're doing. I think they made a fantastic record. Blurry Face is amazing, um, so I love it. Yeah. Where where did used to come from emotionally? Um, you know, I think it's there. There was a part of this record, kind of the same place, Stratosphere, and maybe Best of Intentions came from. Um, kind of dealing with regrets possibly and just looking at them you know you know the you're not supposed to have regrets right you know regrets is poison uh, to your to your spirit and your you know your drive to just keep looking forward you know so um but trying to find a way you know i i feel like we're on if we're if we're honest with ourselves we, we certainly have some degree of regrets throughout our life you're going to start accumulating those um, and it's just important how you process them, you know? And so I think in the, these, a lot of these songs where regret in the right doses can be a very healthy immunization, you know, to help make you stronger, healthier, and uh, applying it to um, just becoming a better person, you know? So that's it. Were there times between Odd Souls and Odd Soul and Vitals where you felt discouraged? I th there was something else I probably missed it. That's a good question. Um, discouraged. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think it, we weren't creating something that we were 
we we wrote a bunch of songs at the at the end of 2012, and it wasn't happening fast enough. Um, we um, we we wanted to make a, a record that that felt um, exciting, felt very now to us, and it just wasn't happening. We just felt like most of the ideas we we're coming up with. Um, which just has been, you know, and we just, I think I was discouraged with my own output. Like I, I just wasn't coming up with, you know, I'd start playing a chord progression, I'd start singing on it, and I'd just feel like, gosh, I've done that already. Or it's just, you know, it just, it just felt like rehash. And that's, um, that was a mind game that was difficult to get past. Um, whether it's writer's block, I don't really know. Um, but it, it took us a while to find the zone to just feel like we were flowing in like genuine inspiration. Um, so yeah, there were some discouraging times where we were kind of wondering, man, are we juiced out? Is this it, man? <laughs> um, and um, but but we kept we kept fighting, you know, we kept digging, trying to trying to find something. And um, everyone in the band is is great guys, and um, I'm glad they they all stuck stuck with it. With us, you know. Do, do you, uh, something about vocal reverb. Sorry, I missed it. Did you like the big ticket in Jacksonville? Absolutely. What a fantastic lineup. Will there be a live DVD? I hope so. I, th I really hope we, um, we properly record the show for this new album. How do you keep your balance with family and mute math? It's difficult. That's the ongoing, that's the ongoing, um, challenge um it's a lot of what stratosphere is about i think it's a cautionary tale about that very thing you know in your in your quest to see your ambitions through follow a dream whatever it is um is the sacrifices that you make along the way you don't necessarily lose the people you love the most you know um it's like the like the saying what's the saying is it um want to travel fast go alone Travel far, go with someone. I think that's the saying, something like that. But yeah, the the of of trying to do this journey um, with your family is important to all the guys in the band. So it's it's a tough balance. It takes work. It's not easy. Um, yeah, I'll talk about Friday's show really quick. Um, Friday's show, we are going to be playing the record Vitals for the first time from start to finish. Really stoked about that. Um, all the proceeds of this show will go to Songs for Kids, the charity we're working with, um, starting a branch in New Orleans. Um, after we play the record, that won't be the whole show. Um, we got some special guests that are going to join us. I think we've announced Rebirth, a brass band, uh, who played on Armistice with us. Uh, PJ Morton's going to be there, Big Sam, uh, and the Revivalists. And they're going to come out, and we're going to play some old songs after we play Vitals. And uh, it's just, it'll be kind of just be a free-for-all jam session. I think we'll just play old songs, and we'll we'll go as long and far as you guys want to go. Whoever shows up, we'll just have fun that night. So it, it should be good. I know some people were thinking about making the trek. They weren't sure if it was just going to be a 45-minute set. Um, but no, we'll we'll play Vitals, and then we'll... We'll, we'll get into some of the back catalog and have fun with the special guests. Um, I don't know if we were going to record it Friday. Um, how is Jordan Madison? He's great. We just finished the video with Jordan and Israel uh, for Monument. So that's um, going to be coming out soon. It came out really great. I can't wait for you guys to see that. So Jordan and Israel running a film company right now. So we did a music video with them. Um, so I'll do just a couple more questions, and I'll let you guys go. How long? Yeah, it's almost been about 45 minutes. Um, will you work with Jeremy Larson again? Yeah, I hope so. Um, it's been a while. Um, Jeremy was also one of the – another J. Jeremy was also another guy we would send our ideas to um, to uh, get some feedback on on this record and just get a reaction, what's good, what could be better. So we got Jeremy Larson, John Foreman, Justin Mel Johnson, and Jamie Liddell. The four J's. All right. <laughs> Have I written any songs for my children? Um, I guess not specifically. Um, I would say All I See, though, is inspired by Amelia. Um, 
So yeah, I guess close enough. Are you self-taught or lessons? It, it started self-taught. Um, play by ear, just trying to pick out things, playing in church a lot. Um, so that's how I started learning music. The thing for me that became really addictive early on was when I realized I didn't have to play the chords that were on the chord chart. I could just react to the melody. You can kind of revoice it. So that became the gateway drug to why I started loving making music. And I've just stayed with it for all these years. Um, but over time, in high school, I started studying, taking lessons, studying theory, um, and beginning to put a language to, to some of the things I was had been flirting with up to that point. So, um, yeah, so great. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Had a had a great time. Hope you all enjoyed uh, seeing what was going on in Stratosphere. And, um, yeah, have a great weekend. And if I don't see you before Christmas, God bless you guys. I'll take care.